So I just want to say welcome to the 100th episode of Do or Do Not. We have a very special episode for you tonight where we are going to have a group with all of the key people who have been involved in the podcast for, you know, dare I say, over three years now, almost three and a half years. Um, we're going to have everybody introduce themselves and kind of do a roll call and then do a little discussion about where everybody is and how the podcast has affected them and, you know, what they've gotten and given. So we're going to start uh, by just, I, I had this silly idea that, you know, I'm a big Star Wars fan, as as everyone listening to the podcast knows. So Mandalorian is big now and, and you hear the uh, Mandalorian Creed and this is the way. And it always makes me think of, of the osteopathic oath, which some of our members will be reciting in the next few months. So the, our oath is, I do hereby affirm my loyalty to the profession I'm about to enter. I will be mindful always of my great responsibility to preserve the health and life of my patients, to retain their confidence and respect both as a physician and as a friend who will guard their secrets with scrupulous honor and fidelity, to perform faithfully my professional duties, to employ only those recognized methods of treatment consistent with good judgment, and with my skill and ability, keeping in mind always nature's laws and the body's inherent capacity for recovery. I will be ever vigilant in aiding in the general welfare of the community, sustaining its laws and institutions, not engaging in those practices which will in any way bring shame or discredit upon myself or my profession. I will give no drugs for deadly purposes to any person, though it be asked of me. I will endeavor to work in accord with my colleagues in a spirit of progressive cooperation and never by word or by act cast imputations upon them or their rightful practice. I will look with respect and esteem upon all those who have taught me my art. To my colleague, I will be loyal and strive always for its best interests and for the interests of the students who will come after me. I will be ever alert to further the application of basic biological truths to the healing art and to develop the principles of osteopathy, which were first enunciated by Andrew Taylor Still. This is the way. Obviously, I just added that this is a way, but it sounds cool. Um, so let's uh we'll do a quick roll call. So um Basically, I'm, I'm going to ask each of you, and we'll go in order uh, that you join the podcast, more or less. Um, can you tell me how uh, you know what you where you are? Give us your name, where you went to school, what you're doing now, or what you plan on doing, and how you first got involved in the podcast. So let's start with uh, Tianyu. All right. Well, I guess it's kind of fitting since you know. The first one uh, with you, Dr. Storch, to undertake this endeavor. You know, everyone, I'm just grateful for everyone that's really helped uh, bring this podcast to even greater heights uh, alongside us. So thank you all for, for everyone's help. But my name is Tian Uh For people who've been listening from the beginning, you might recognize me from earlier uh, episodes. I worked with Dr. Storch to kind of make this podcast. And it was really our idea to make a resource for these uh, for these people who, you know, we feel like we didn't have enough resources. We wanted to showcase all of the amazing osteopathic physicians out there who could do things, even though a lot of us have a lot of self-doubts to help those and to prove that, you know, we're just good as everyone else. So I'm currently in my second year of internal medicine at the... Uh, NYU Long Island Division branch in internal medicine. After my third year, I'm going to do a chief year and then hopefully apply to fellowship after that. I went to NYIT, New York Institute of Technology as an undergrad and, oh, sorry, for medical school. And I went to New Paltz for undergrad. I did a seven year combined program. So three years in New Paltz and four years at NYIT Com. All right, Tia, and you, before, before we move on, I just want you to talk a little bit about why you decided to call me to come to my office 
before before we were even talking about the podcast, what you remember about our first discussion about the podcast and kind of how things started up, like how you got it off the ground. Sure, of course. I remember I remember the exact day I called you still. <laughs> it was during my surgery rotation and I was getting my butt kicked during surgery. And in between cases, I was thinking how much I didn't want to do surgery <laughs> and I wanted to do, uh, you know, gastroenterology. And I remember your lecture that you gave, you know, a couple of months back. So I emailed you asking for research initially, you know, if you were, had any research leads to do anything to kind of, uh, you know, put me, put me out there for everyone else, like, you know. And I remember you saying to me that, you know, research is great. You know, everyone should have research to do gastroenterology, but research doesn't set you apart from everyone else. And what do you think about the osteopathic profession? And really since then, you know, before that, I didn't have any thoughts like that. You know, I know what being an osteopath is, but I never really like thought more into it before that. And that was the first moment where I kind of thought, you know, about the other individuals who are in the profession and kind of looked out for everyone else. And you told me, you know, what about the resources? What about, what do you think about the osteopathic profession and how do you view it? And what do you think about everyone else in it? And I remember just from that moment that I tried to start that podcast with you. I tried to kind of get all those ideas and it was just a really steep learning curve. You know, I had to learn how to record. I had to learn how to, you know, I buy a microphone. That was first of all, I had to find the proper applications and, you know, even the people I know, obviously a lot of them you introduced at first, but, you know, just learning from all these people and just getting all these ideas from everyone and just being a library of information, you know, has just been, was just really the first step into kind of building my career. All right, Amir, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna move on to you. Can you just um, start off with some introduction? Yeah, so uh, my name is Amir Kibani. Uh, I'm a first year at Tampa General Hospital um, for emergency medicine. I started out at um, Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine. And uh, how I got involved with the podcast was uh, some random day, a random guy named Dr. Storage emailed me. And I had no clue who he was. I thought it was spam. But, uh, um, you know, I, I just felt something from the email that he sent me. And, you know, I emailed him back, we set a meeting uh, for a call the next day. And that was, you know, the inception of when I started working on the podcast. And since then, you know, I've seen it go from, you know, uh, Tian Yu and a couple others to, you know, this big, um, this big podcast that now like has close to a thousand, a thousand followers on Instagram. And I'm, I'm really proud for, you know, what it's become. Courtney, can you uh, give us an introduction and Tell us how you got involved. Of course. Um, so I'm Courtney. I am currently a fourth year at Michigan State uh, University College of Osteopathic Medicine. I'm hoping in about 17 hours to join Amir in the world of emergency medicine, but we will find out soon enough. Um, so Mir is actually who brought me on board with this awesome podcast team. So uh, we work together uh, on the National Student Osteopathic Medical Association board. Um, and he found out I had some history and background working in kind of social media and the marketing realm. Um, so I came on board to hopefully help expand the reach of the podcast and, um, you know, help to promote the mission where we're looking to reach the ears of pre-meds who might be interested in pursuing osteopathic medicine as well as, you know, inspire those osteopathic medical students to uh, listen to these success stories of osteopathic physicians and, and hopefully be driven to pursue their, their own goals and osteopath, um, their own goals and as aspirations working in osteopathic medicine as well. Courtney, do you remember when we were on the short coat podcast? And can you just talk to us a little bit about that? What your experience was like? 
Yeah, that was an awesome collaboration. Um, you know, I think it was really a unique point and turning point for us in our podcast because we got to connect with someone else who was pretty big in the medical student realm, as well as making an impression on those who want to pursue a career in medicine. However, we kind of brought our own unique views and experiences from the osteopathic side. So I think they were really interested in hearing um, they're more of a, they're based at an allopathic institution and um, they were interested in hearing a little bit more about osteopathic medicine, the challenges that we face, the successes that we have kind of on our side of things. We're a newer profession. We've you know, been around since the 1800s, which is kind of crazy to say that that's a newer profession. But um, because of it, we've had our own challenges in growing. And I, and I think, you know, being able to share that on another podcast and kind of give our perspectives was a really unique and cool opportunity. Tiffany, you're up. All right. So um, I'm Tiffany Carlson. I'm a fourth year uh, student at the Chicago College of Osteopathic Medicine. And unlike Courtney, I can sleep through the night. Um, I already matched in uh, December through the military match. So I will be headed to uh, Fort S Sam Houston and I will be a transitional intern at Brooks Army Medical Center. Um, and what's really cool about that place, it's the only trauma a level one trauma center for the DOD, as well as the headquarters for army medicine. So I'm excited to uh, strengthen my clinical skills and then I will be applying to a specialty next year. So we shall see about that. Um, as far as the podcast, as Tianyo was saying, oh, I remember the day that I, you know, I uh, met with Dr. Storch. And so uh, he had actually sent a huge, uh, email blast to all the Facebook pages of all the the comms out in the country. And I was like, oh, this sounds kind of cool. A, a podcast. I'd been wanting to do uh, some podcasts, but again, didn't know know much about how to start one. So I thought I would uh, ask Tianyo if I could join the team. And so we had this meeting and um, I was driving around in my little security vehicle because I was working at a, a power plant as a security officer on the weekends. Uh, and we just kind of talked about uh, what the podcast was doing and how I could be a part of it. And so it's just been a great opportunity to work with medical students and then also, um, you know, kind of cold call physicians so they could share share how their own journey went. And I've really enjoyed uh, being able to meet with various people from all, all sorts of professions, from OB-GYN to anesthesia to emergency medicine and occupational health. So it's just been a great opportunity personally, and then hopefully other students can glean some wisdom from those episodes. All right, Hadi, I think uh, you're up next. Hi, so my name is Hadi Tharik. I'm a second year medical student at the Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine. Um, so I joined the podcast. I remember I think there was like a cold call email that was sent out to the entire class. And um, I remember reading it. I've had no experience in podcasting or anything like that, but something about it just seemed really unique and interesting. And um, so I responded to the email and we had our first meeting. And ever since then, I've been on the team. So I think it's been like a year, maybe a little over a year. Um, and so my role for the podcast has mainly been to host and to interview doctors. And it's been a really amazing experience. And Dr. Storch has been so amazing in giving me some really meaningful stories to explore through the podcast. And I've learned a lot through different specialties and um, kind of getting advice from different doctors and different stages of their careers has been such a valuable thing. I don't think I've ever been able or will ever have been able to have that opportunity if it wasn't for the podcast. So I'm really grateful for the opportunity. Um, so yeah, I still have a long way to go in terms of my career. I think I might be the earliest, like I'm only the second year, so everyone else is pretty <laughs> further in their careers compared to me, but um, I'm really excited to see how the podcast is going to help me throughout medical school and then eventually residency. So I just want to ask you, Hadia, like as a, as a second year medical student, you know, I found that your interviews are great and your insight is is spectacular. Do you find it difficult interviewing senior doctors with clinical experience? How do you do such a great job not having had that experience and do you find it difficult? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I was thinking about that um, a while ago and I think I realized the reason why is because as a first year and now a second year medical student, 
I think I came into it with a lot of humility and knowing that all of these people have had so much experience and have learned so much that I just want to be a sponge and absorb all of it and give them the opportunity to share their story in the best way possible. And I think that also comes down to how you can be a good interviewer when it comes to these types of situations, because you don't want to make it about yourself. You want to make it about them. And if you come in with the mindset of wanting to learn as much as you can, then that really paves the way to having a really good conversation and you're really highlighting the guest and their story. Akito, can you introduce yourself and at the end of your introduction, make a comment as to whether you think your voice or Amir's voice is better for a talk show? Well, uh, already uh, kind of setting myself up for a path of self-destruction there. But uh, anyway, um, my name is Akito Nickel. Uh, I'm a fourth year student at the NYIT College of Osteopathic Medicine over in Old Westbury. I am applying to diagnostic radiology, and much like Courtney, uh, I will have my fate determined by the almighty algorithm in less than 24 hours, which is slightly terrifying, but also somewhat exciting. As far as uh, how I got involved in the podcast, it's funny, I was talking to a friend of mine about how, you know, eh, I think I always thought it would be kind of fun to do a podcast. Everyone has always told me, you know, it would be good to get involved with the podcast because I have a good voice for radio and a face for it as well. Um, so one of my friends ended up doing a rotation with Dr. Storch and she mentioned, you know, uh, he runs this podcast. It's called Do or Do Not. And I said, hey, uh, I'm willing to throw my ring in there, uh, my hat in the ring there uh, and just get involved with this project because it does sound pretty interesting. It sounds pretty special. So at one point I got on the phone with Dr. Storch and we just talked about what the whole point of the podcast was. And I really enjoyed it because I distinctly remember talking about my own pre-med and medical school journey and how it kind of relates to the overall message that the podcast is trying to send about how osteopathic education is not only a viable option for people trying to pursue a career in medicine, but a very good one and one with plenty of successes that we can draw a lot out of. As for uh, who's got the better voice, um, I'm not going to comment on that. I, I don't want to be destroyed. <laughs> Sorry, Amir. I think he has you beat. I love you everybody here. Really so. All good. Amir's just going to like club me over the head with that nice guitar he's got on the back over there. So I'm just going to follow that. We're going to we're going to shift gears as as we normally do and and just ask each of you to maybe talk a little bit about your favorite episode either that you've done or heard and possibly tell a story and this is a little self-promoting as I always do or promoting for the podcast how the podcast has helped you professionally either in a personal way or on an interview or uh, been brought up by another uh, doctor? Amir, do you want to start? Amir? Yeah, yeah, I can start. Um, so you want us to talk about a uh, favorite episode that we've done? Tell us that your your favorite episode that you've listened to or done, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, and you're just your favorite episode, and how the podcast has helped you, how participating in the podcast has helped you professionally, either on an interview where it's come up or, uh, you know, uh, the experience has helped you in your professional yeah. career. So, um. The one episode that always comes to mind, and I might butcher his name, but it was Dr. Aroni. Um, I didn't do the uh, podcast personally, but he was a general surgeon, and he was just so motivating um, throughout that whole episode. And I still go back um, to that episode and just like listen to portions just to kind of like, you know, on my way to work, kind of just fire myself up. But um, that always has stuck to, uh, stuck with me. Um Another episode was the pediatrician that I interviewed, um, and he just 
embodies like uh, everyone on our podcast embodies um what it is to be an osteopathic physician but he specifically dr tyler he specifically just resonated with me and he was very involved with um a lot of the organizations i was involved with and just the way he took time out of his schedule went out into the community uh you know did dance classes for the youth uh, to try to get them you know back into shape or get them into shape um I just loved that and loved his story um, because it had a personal connection um, of why he was going to the YMCA and doing these classes and dancing with these kids and teaching them how to dance. Um, So those are those are my two uh, episodes. Um, What was the second portion of the question? Sorry. Tell tell us if, if and how the podcast has helped you professionally, either discussed on an interview for residency. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, professionally, um, first off, I I did, you know, I don't, the best way I can put this is that the podcast made a huge impact on me. Um, I believe I made, you know, a decent impact on the podcast, but it really, the podcast really helped me evolve, you know, the way I uh, see leadership, the way I, you know, treat groups of people that I work with, how to listen to others. Um, so it helped me grow um, on a you know professional level, personally, and that way. When it came to uh, residency interviews, I was asked during every single interview about the podcast because I think my class was one of the first that went through the COVID pa- pandemic, and it was hard for us to kind of find any opportunity um, to help the community in any sort of way. Uh, without, you know, uh, being exposed to the virus. Um, So when, you know, Dr. Storch um, reached out to me, I think it was before COVID, um, you know, I was glad to help. But then when COVID started kind of making its way and, you know, going through the country and the world, um, that's when the podcast kind of like started becoming even more important in the eyes of like, every program that's interviewed me because we were able to help students and be mentors on a really, really big scale. Um, you know, speaking to uh, speaking to a lot of people, a lot of osteopathic physicians that, you know, embody osteopathic medicine and kind of getting that word out to every pre-med student. That's, that's just something that a lot of program directors were just shocked by, like something that they didn't think um, you know, someone could think about doing in such a quick, uh, you know, quick time uh, when COVID hit. So it really did impress a lot of program directors. Courtney, we'll uh, we'll go we'll go with the ER theme. Oh, always a tough act to follow, Amiris. <laughs> um, but I would say, you know, starting with my favorite episode, there was one episode that just really continues to re- resonate with me. And being involved in social, you know, I was never involved in um, any of the filming, or not the filming, but the recording of the episodes. But the one I think that, that was the most inspiring to me to listen to was Dr. Chris at Champion. Uh, she is a force to reckon with, I think, in the world of medicine. If there is anyone in any that can accomplish anything I have no doubt that it'll be her and and I definitely recommend to the listeners to go listen to her episode she's done some amazing things throughout her career and I think being a woman in medicine she's really inspiring um to basically show you know if you put your your heart and your mind to it you can accomplish it she's got anything from a degree in law to public health work to um now her you know her degree in osteopathic medicine and and her you know is on the path to uh being a surgeon so um you know i think her episode was definitely the most inspiring to me um as far as, you know, how the podcast um, has been uh, on the residency trail, you know, people seeing it on my application, um, I've been asked, like Amir, I've been asked about it quite a bit as well in interviews. And um, I, you know, had several people talk about the media and marketing experience, particularly as a medical student, you don't get a lot of that experience um, coming into residency applications. And um, I think, you know, being able to tell the story about how, you know, I was able to help promote the podcast mission and reach medical students. Social media is an incredible tool when it comes to medicine. And I think people are just figuring out how to use it. Um, A lot of, you 
you know, in the ER specifically, I talked about this in interviews as well. Um, you have such a a quick few moments to build rapport with a patient uh, and they see social media every single day. And so this is something that influences people and, and, you know, to overcome that as a physician um, and be able to make a connection with somebody where they trust you above all else. Maybe the things they're seeing every day is, is uh, so important. And so I think being able to utilize social media in that fashion to um, promote, to you know, the good of osteopathic medicine, I think is uh, an incredible, incredible thing when you do it correctly. And program directors were really interested in hearing about this and, and learning about, uh, I think, the, the future of social media's integration into uh, promoting health and wellness and, and uh, what physicians do and, and, you know, the build rapport that way if, if utilized correctly. That's awesome. And just just a follow up on on Dr. Champion. So I actually uh, texted Carissa recently because she's also a big Star Wars fan. She has a dog named Leia and um, she's in uh, Oklahoma City doing a cosmetic fellowship. And and she actually asked if we would have her back on the podcast team. Uh, which she's kind of floated on and off with her workload, but I told her obviously we'd be happy to have her. So uh, Tiff, you're next. Do you want to tell us your favorite episode? And Yeah, no. So I guess um, going along that uh, with uh, Dr. Champion's episode, I think part of the podcast, why it's so unique is that we're able to um, start to build networks. So I found her actually just randomly on LinkedIn and uh, reached out to her and said, hey, do you want to join our podcast? And then we were able to get, um, you know, some more interviews. And she did a great interview uh, with a, a family medicine doc that does a lot of social media as well. Um, personally, I think uh, my favorite episode uh, remains uh, Dr. Steinbaum's episode. She's a cardiologist in New York, and it was just a great opportunity that Dr. Storch uh, let me do. She's an author, and then she runs her own practice and does some pretty unique osteopathic uh, medicine that others may not do. She's very committed to osteopathy. But that's not the only favorite episode. I think part of uh, growing with the podcast is uh, being able to take uh, feedback and then utilizing that feedback to make a better product. So uh, Dr. Bogey is a mentor of mine. Uh, we met in Colorado at uh, Fort Carson while he was an anesthesiologist there. And I had invited him to be on the podcast, but it was my first episode and it was God awful. And so Dr. Storch and Tianya was like, hey, you know, <laughs> thanks for thanks for trying, but <laughs> um, let's try this again. And since you know Dr. Bogey is my mentor, he was very gracious to actually we re-recorded the episode. So I think um, just the opportunity to network and then also learn from our mistakes has been really essential, especially going forward um, as an intern next year. Akito, favorite episode. And influence. All right. Um, I think if I had to choose one that's really stuck with me, actually, it was the episode with uh, Dr. William Anderson. Uh, you know, the at the time, ninety-three-year-old surgeon uh, and remarkable civil rights leader. I mean, if we want to talk about someone who had, who really truly has, I guess, what we would consider an underdog story. Um, a man rising up against very well-established racism in his time to become a physician, uh, to become, you know, an osteopathic leader, and also to be involved in the civil rights movement with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah, that's that's pretty impressive story, all right. And I think the other reason why it kind of sticks with me is um, I think it ties into something else that I've just drawn out of my time in the podcast in general, which is that no one no one in medicine and certainly no one in osteopathic medicine uh, has a quote unquote perfect story. Everyone has had to face some degree of hardship. Everyone has had to overcome certain obstacles. Some obstacles are made, you know, seem absolutely insurmountable to some. 
and other obstacles may seem relatively small, but no one has a perfect journey. And the idea is that through grit, we overcome it. And that's just something I've drawn from that. That kind of leads me into what I've drawn, what I've gotten out of the podcast myself. I'm part of it was just learning from all the different stories that I've heard, the stories of grit, the stories of overcoming hardship, and as well as, you know, stories of, you know, compassion, interest, people just following the things that they're interested in and passionate about and finding success in doing that. And I think also just on a personal level, you know, the podcast has come up on plenty of my residency interviews. I mean, it's it happened in a couple of different interviews where uh, someone will just make some passing joke about like, hey, are you on a radio show? Are you on a podcast? You've got a good voice for it. And I was like, well, actually, <laughs> uh, I'm sure you've read my application, but it is on there. <laughs> and they said, yes, yes, we've read your application. <laughs> Hadia. So uh, my favorite episode was one that I recorded pretty early on when I joined the podcast and it stuck with me ever since. And um, that was my interview with uh, Dr. Nizza. And that one stood out to me for a couple of reasons. One, he is an infectious disease physician and I've always had an interest in ID. So um, it was really cool to be able to talk to him about his career. And then secondly, um, for those of you who have heard that podcast, it is a very emotional one. And the story that he told about his life and his wife and everything in between, it really stood out to me. And it was the first time I was in a situation where I was having to talk to about talk to someone about something so personal, but he was so gracious and willing to completely share his story with everyone. And um, as the episode continued and he gave like his little tidbit that we always ask everyone at the end, what is the greatest piece of advice that you would give? His advice stood out to me and I think I'm going to remember it for the rest of my life where he just tried to, he was saying like, you need to just fix your perspective on medicine and life and remember how important it is to find a balance between the two. And as a current second year, I'm getting ready or I'm studying for boards. I'm taking them in the summer. It's easy to start getting really disillusioned with medicine sometimes and just getting really tired. And um, his advice definitely rings true where you have to try and see the beauty in life and enjoy it and balance it with everything that you're going to do in medicine because it is nonstop. It is such a long journey. Um, and so for that reason, um, his episode is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, in terms of how the podcast has personally affected me, because I'm so early on in my career, I haven't had the chance to apply to residency or anything like that yet, um, or even rotations. But um, I think the lessons that it's taught me is definitely going to help me um, relate to physicians in my clerkships. I think that's something that a lot of pre-med students and like first and second year med students struggle with is um, making connections with physicians who are much older than you and that you have really nothing in common with. And so this has kind of forced me to think about creative ways for me to strike up conversation with someone about something and learn something in the process. And I'm really looking forward to being able to use that skill third year and fourth year. All right, Colin, last but not least. Yeah, I think it's really great that I'm seeing that we're all seeing a theme in everyone who's worked with the podcast, especially people here with us today, that the podcast gives us as much as we give it. And it's kind of in both ways. And for me to, you know, be able to start that process into giving everyone who works with it and all the listeners something that they can cherish for the rest of their lives and advice and information that they're going to use for a long time is, you know, it just means a lot to me. But to the question, which is my favorite episode, I know Dr. Storage always knows the answer. It's always going to be episode five, Dr. Epowitz. <laughs> you know, his advice has been with me since the day I've heard it. And I've used it since then. And it's applied to every aspect of medicine and not just really medicine, honestly, to every aspect of life, which is approach it with a good attitude and approach it diligently and try your best to do the best that you can with what you have. And, you know, being in my intern year, being in third and fourth year medical school, doing the applications, you know, going through second year, it's really just about doing the best job that you can and like he says with a smile as well you know sometimes you can't always be smiling but it's you know you just gotta try as hard as you can sometimes and you gotta do your best 
um, and how it's impacted me. I mean, that's, you know, very easy. I can tell you since I'm the most far along technically, you know, the podcast has come up pretty much in every single interview. It's just such an easy bouncing point to talk off of when someone asks you about leadership skills. And it's just so easy to talk about everything that uh, you've done and see the benefits of it. And without a doubt, it came up in my chief residency interview as well. And they were, you know, they asked me, what would you think, what, would, what makes you a great leader? Why do you think you have the skills to lead all these residents? And it's easy, right? It's just, hey, I already somewhat done it already. You know, I'm I'm leading a bunch of my uh, eventually co-residents and my colleagues into making a product. And I have to take into consideration everyone's, you know, everyone's own goals and the overall goal and you know it just really makes it so easy to connect with a lot of people so without a doubt the podcast has given me just as much as I've given it so I just want to say my favorite episodes are all the episodes that are done by by the student hosts and and specifically watching people improve and and Tiffany you know started off fresh and and became an excellent host at the end of her tenure. I my favorite episode specifically is is actually Colin's episode and and I love when I asked him to be on the podcast and he said he didn't have really much to say, which is just so humble and and I think what makes all of our guests the best guests are are the ones that that don't think that they have anything to say and those are the ones that usually have the most to say. I, I want to just take a minute to thank all of you for, for going on this journey with me. I want to thank all of the members of the podcast who are working with us now or have worked with us over the past three years. I wish we could have everybody on this episode. It would just be incredibly long. I'm just going to hold on. I'm just going to mute a second. Get the dog out one sec. And I just want to say that I look forward to working with all of you in the future and having all of you at some point on the podcast to share your journeys with us. Yeah, Thank you for allowing us to go on this journey with you. And thank you for everyone for sharing their experience with me and everyone else in the podcast and enriching all of our lives. Yes, thank you so much for this wealth of opportunities and being able to meet with so many people and hear so many incredible stories. Right, um, on my end, it's been an honor to be a part of this team and to continue to be a part of this team. I've learned so much and I'm really looking forward to learning more and seeing how far this podcast is going to go. I definitely echo that, you know, thank you so much for bringing us on board and giving us the opportunity as medical students to help expand the reach of osteopathic medicine. And, um, you know, I'm so excited to have been here from almost the very beginning to see how everything has grown. And I'm very excited to, you know, watch where it continues to go from here. Thanks, uh, Dr. Storch and Tianyo and the rest of the team. It's definitely been a, a journey and it continues to be a journey. And I think that's what the story of the podcast is, is really our individual journeys and then our collective journey as osteopathic profession. Um, and so it's really the do or do not, like there is no try. We just continue that journey and keep and, and keep trying in our own way.